Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one to God. Amen. Welcoming you all to another episode of Oroho the Way, a conversation with Malfono Shemshono, Dr. George Kiras. We are fortunate to have Dr. George Kiras with us for the second round of conversation dealing with the life and literature of the Syriac Orthodox world and literature and its contemporary relevance. For those of you who have joined in our first conversation with Malfono George Kiras and with Reverend Dr. Renjan Matthew, you might have remembered that Reverend Matthew introduced our honorable guest to those audience. For those of you who are joining for the first time, let me briefly introduce Dr. George Grass before you. To elaborate Malfano, Dr. George Grass's academic biography, which we are going to deal with the academic thing today, we really need more than an hour or so. Therefore, I'm not going to attempt that at this point in time, but you can browse in the internet and get the details about Malfano, Shemshan, or Dr. George Kiras. However, a very brief introduction is needed over here today. And therefore, Malfano, Shemshan, or Dr. George Kiras, I wish to explain some of his biographical notes is the founder and president of Beth Marduto, the Syriac Study Center, and the president and co-founder of George, George, uh, Georgia's Press, New Jersey, USA. For his personal note, he was born in Bethlehem and moved to the USA, where he did his part of the academic studies. He obtained various degrees in Syriac language and literature from Orthodox o Oxford University and also various other universities across the world. In our conversation with Dr. George Kuras, he helped us with a general overview of Syriac language and its significance in the modern world in the last round, that is the first round of discussion. Today, we will be specifically looking at one of the Syriac texts, which is the most important and sacred text for the Syriac community, which is the Peshitha Bible. And I wish to welcome Malfono Shemshono, Dr. George Kiras among us. And we will have a conversation about Peshitha Bible in this episode. Welcome. Uh, uh, Malfono Shemshan or Dr. George Kiras. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that we have been, you're, you're familiar to Urho audience now, and we are always looking forward to your wisdom and your knowledge about the Syriac language literature, especially the sacred text, Peshitha Bible. And I know today uh, you, you, you will not get enough time to explain the entire details of Peshitha. However, uh, we have some academic audience, we have uh, uh, the regular church goers, and, and uh, we have people who are researching in Syriac Bible and other languages. So I think we have to combine all these aspects together today. And therefore, I wish to have a few questions at the beginning to go with the fundamentals, probably at the beginning of the origin and its expansion of the Syriac Bible. And then we will come to the latest version translation of the Syriac uh, Bible uh, that we are going to interestingly looking forward to listen from you. And therefore, my uh, probably as a preliminary question, I just take uh, your own words that if I if I really take your words, you, you have mentioned somewhere that Syriac Bible preserves the ancient Bible or biblical legacy. How do you justify this sentence? And probably 
uh, I, we, the audience would like to listen from a background of some one or two more questions that what is the origin of Syriac scriptural tradition? This is a, these are two uh, real connected questions. Again, how do you explain it? Center frames gospel of Dietesaran or the Evangelio in the Mahalte. So it's all combined together. Yes. Um, so uh, the justification that, that the Syriac Bible represents an ancient uh, biblical heritage um, is basically because the, the Syriac Peshitta Bible um, is a very early translation of the scriptures. Uh, if we go to the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, uh, the Peshitta or the Syriac version uh, represents the, the, the Hebrew Bible of the first and second century. Uh, and we even have ancient manuscripts that prior to the discoveries of, of the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, are more ancient than any Hebrew manuscript. We have Hebrew, uh, we, we have Syriac manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible, the, uh, dated manuscripts that go back to the fifth and the sixth century. We probably have some manuscript, maybe undated, uh, that may even go to the fourth century. Uh, but definitely we have manuscripts from the fifth and the sixth century of, of the scriptures. Uh, so they represent a, a very early uh, rendition of the Hebrew Bible uh, into the Syriac language. That's as far as the, the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament is concerned. Um, as far as the New Testament is, is and in particular the Gospels, you have the Evangelion, the, the Gospel of the Mixed, which was the, the, the version of the Gospels that was popular amongst the Syriac users during the time of St. Ephraim. Uh, this version of the Bible is, is quite ancient. It is a mixture of the four Gospels into one narration. And its importance is in the fact that it draws not only from the canonical, the canonical Greek Gospels, that is the canonical Greek Gospels that came down to us, but it, it draws on pre-canonical texts. Uh, and that's that's where the importance of of these gospels lies in the fact that it draws on this extra biblical material that got filtered out once the canonical Greek uh, gospels uh, took hold. And the the gospels of the time of Saint Ephraim uh, are the earliest form that we know in Syriac. Uh, and later on came the Evangelion dem Farshe, the separated ones, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So that is the justification to, to uh, the claim that Syria represents an ancient biblical legacy. Uh, and this is why if you look at the Bible, uh, the uh, Bible that is produced in any language, in English, in German, in French, that is a scholarly Bible. It is always, in its, first, in its footnotes, you will always find references to the Syriac because it is considered one of the primary early versions of the Bible. Thank you. I think that gives us a very good light in terms of uh, center frames Bible of combining all these three, uh, four, sorry, four Gospels. But in between uh, that uh, explanation, you have mentioned about another word, Old Syriac Version Bible. Is it the same that you are talking about the four Gospels together of a center frame and this Old Syriac Version are, are the same? So uh, basically the, the, the progression goes from the, the mixed Gospel, which is the Gospel that St. Ephraim brought a commentary on. And then it goes to the four separated Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, which develops until it comes to the version that we now call Pshito. Okay. Uh, of course, the old Syriac, which is the one in between the Diathasrun and the Pshito, uh, 
is a Bible that we only learned about in the 19th century. It is something that we did not know about. Uh, and when the Western scholars discovered it and realized that its text is pre prishito it, is, it comes before the Pshito. They called it the Old Syriac Gospels. The Syriac Fathers did not call it the Old Syriac Gospels. It was just the Gospels. Uh, but they called it the Mfirshe in order to, 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 to distinguish it from the Mhalte. The Mhalte is the mixed, the one narration. And mm -hmm. the Mfirshe is the separated. That means four separate Gospels. So it's in between. Okay, thank you. Uh, that that clears some doubts. You know, most of the time we uh, we have this term, the old Syriac version of the Bible. Probably something very much connected to that. Uh, would you kindly give us uh, some brief uh, highlights about the Peshitta or what what you talk about the old Syriac version of the Bible, and is it the same that uh, Blessed Philoxenus of Marburg, or maybe in later we called as a Harkel translation, Thomas Harkel translation. What are what are the difference between these these old old translations of Bible? Yeah. So so the the earliest form of the of the Old Testament is what we call the Pshito now, and as far as the New Testament, what came after the Old Syriac is what we call Pshita. Pshita means simple, simple. and the name at the time, of course, did not exist. You mentioned two versions, that of Philoxenos of Mabug and of Thomas of Harkal, the Harkleim. Yes. Let's talk about them so that we can understand why we are calling the one that we have in our hands, Pshita, simple. Um, so more Philoxenos of Mabug uh, uh, wanted to use uh, a version of the Bible for theological reflections and for theological discussions, especially in the context of the Christological controversies of the 5th and 6th century, Chalcedonian versus non-Chalcedonian. Mm -hmm. Philoxenos felt that the New Testament, the Pshit, what we call now the Pshita, Pshita New Testament, of course, it wasn't called that at the time. He felt that uh, it, because it was made in a free manner in order to make it very clear Syriac, mm -hmm. he felt that in order to do theological discussions and argumentations, he needed a version in Syriac that is extremely literal with respect to the Greek letter for letter or word for word, let's say. So he commissioned one of his core episcopi, uh, one core episcopos to, uh, named Polycarp to make mm -hmm. this translation and we call it the Philixonian. Okay. Unfortunately, apart from the writings of more Philoxenos that survive and quoted, we don't have much that is left from it, but it was not meant for us to read it in church, and that's why it does not survive. It was supposed to be an academic exercise. It was a resource for theologians to use. So they wanted it to be very, very close to the Greek. The Greek, of course, of the time of Morphiloxenos. The Pshito is based on the Greek of the earlier centuries, third, fourth century, while that of Morphiloxenos is based on the Greek of the fifth and the sixth century, the later times. Um, then came the uh, uh, the version of Thomas of Harkel, which was a revision of the Philoxenos version to make it even closer and closer to the Greek. During the time of Thomas, there was a new style of translation, what we call literal translation or mirror translation. That means if there is a word in the Greek or a preposition or a prefix, I want to, re to represent it in the Syriac. Okay. Of course, anybody who does translation, if you take Malayalam and you want to translate it into English and your main objective is to represent the Malayalam prefixes and suffixes, you end up with very weird English. Oh, yes. And this is what the result was, very weird Syriac. Mm -hmm. And this Syriac was complicated because it was weird Syriac. It was really... Uh, as if it was Greek in a Syriac dress. 
because this one was complicated, by the ninth century, people began to call the version that we have in our hands now the simple one. That right. is the simpler, the easier to read. Pshitto or Pshitta in East Syria. And that's where the name comes. It, it, it comes much later when people say, okay, this is not the complicated one that okay. is so, so difficult to read. This is the easy one to read. So we're going to call it the Pshitta version. Excellent. I think uh, you have you have done a very good job for each one of us. And, and I think now we are very clear how the word Peshita and the, even the, the term mean to the Bible in, in, in contrast to the earlier version, versions that, that was a bit more complicated. I think that makes more sense for us now. And with that note, I believe that uh, the Syriac Orthodox Church, particularly uh, in their liturgy, I've I've heard one of your your interviews where you have emphasizing on the use of the Peshitta Bible in the Syriac liturgy, not only the Syriac Orthodox liturgy, but all the Syrian family liturgies. So how do how do you uh, how do you uh, prompt or give a, 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 an explanation about uh, about the statement? Yes. Yeah, so 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 basically the this this the the nice thing about the the Peshitta is that it transcends the Christological controversies. It oh. transcends the various traditions. So the Syriac Pshitta Bible, and our English translation now represents that Pshitta, is the Bible not only for the Syriac Orthodox Church, but for the entire family that uses Syriac as a liturgical language. So this includes the Assyrian Church of the East, the Chaldean Church, the Maronite Church, the Syriac Catholic Church, and the, the six, seven churches in Malankara, the Martoma Church, the, the, the Syro Malangara Church, the Syro Malabar Church. All these churches, the Bible, the, the Pshitta Bible, is, is the Bible of, of their heritage, but also the Bible of their liturgy. What do we mean by the Bible of their liturgy? We have a lot of liturgical hymns that are obviously based on the biblical narrative. But they're not based on the biblical narrative as it appears in the Hebrew Bible or in the Greek Bible or in the Septuagint Bible. Uh, they are based on the Peshitta text. And for this reason, I always say that uh, in order to understand the biblical references of our uh, liturgy, we need to look at the version of the Bible on which it is based. Uh, I often uh, uh, come across deacons or people come and ask me, uh, well, when when we enter the church, we say, uh, for example, or we say this verse or that. Uh, usually these are things are drawn from Psalms and whatnot. But when they look at the English translation, which are in our own liturgies, which we basically grab from King James, or mostly we usually grab from King James, and they say, but, but it doesn't say the same thing. And I tell them, well, of course it doesn't say the same thing because the, the Syriac liturgy is based on the Pshitto text. It's not based on King James. Between the Pshitta and King James, it, it, it's not a huge divide, but it's a different story. It's a different history of how the King James came into being. The King James came into being in Europe. And it is based on late manuscripts of Europe. Uh, it, 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 is, it is about uh, more than a thousand years after the, the Pshitto came into being. And there's no connection between the King James and the Pshitto. Of course, when you open a Syriac liturgical text that is printed either in the United States or somewhere in the diaspora with Syriac on one side and English on one side taken from King James, obviously they're not going to match. So that is why I always say that you need to look at the Pshitto or translations from the Pshitto in order to understand the, the liturgical usage of, 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 of the text. 
Thank you. Uh, I think uh, your explanation is uh, very much uh, appreciated in this uh, area. At the same time, I think there is there is one doubt that is common in, in all uh, liturgical community, especially in the modern time. Recently, one of the priests from, from our own tradition asked me about why don't we why don't we find any of the millennium uh, expressions in the revelations are not found in the in our liturgical texts. So I, I was just uh, trying to read uh, some more into this area and I explained a few things. But having said this explanation about the use of Peshitta in the liturgy, but if you look at the Peshitta Bible today, you find even revelation, but which is not included in the most of the liturgical expressions in our church. What, what is the logic behind this? Yes. So if you were to look at the um, at the latest edition of the New Testament, of course, there is revelation there in Syriac, but it is given in a section, and I'm trying to open it here so I can read it exactly for you. It is given in a section, it's called Part 4, Part 4, non Pishita books. non Pishita okay. books. Second Peter, Second John, Three John, Jude, and Revelation. Okay. These texts, these texts belong to the sixth century in Syriac. That means these texts entered Syriac around the sixth century. Why are they not in our liturgy? The primary reason is that when these texts even not only in our church, even in the Greek church, when these texts uh, kind of began to, to, uh, to become part of the scriptures, there were initially discussions about them. Are they canonical? Are they not canonical? Do we include them? Do we not include them? Discussions usually take time. Yeah? yeah, yeah. And by the time, by the time, some churches said, okay, well, yes, maybe they can be included. By, by the 12th century, 11th century, 12th century, we have Barsalibi, who oh. talks about Revelation, Barsalibi. Uh -huh. But that's quite yeah. late when we, talk, uh, when, when, when we are in the 12th century, in the 11th century. Uh, so it takes quite some time. And by the time some of these texts were, have become acceptable, uh, our liturgy and our lectionary readings are quite old. They already got fixed. Okay. And because they already got fixed, every Sunday already had readings. There was no room to add more readings from Revelation to these Sundays and to these feasts. So for this reason, for this reason, uh, you don't find them used liturgically. Uh, in the Coptic tradition, for example, Revelation is read, the entirety of Revelation is read, I believe either during Passion Week or during uh, Lent, I can't remember exactly. But the fact that it is read all together in one shot, <laughs> uh, that is an indication also that that, that reading is coming much later. That, that means it, got, it, it would have gotten inserted after the rest of the liturgical year is already fixed. Okay. And it's for this reason that we don't have any references in our liturgies, even in the hymns, uh, uh, to, to, to Revelation. Thank you. That, that, that gives a very good uh, reasoning for us to understand why Revelation is not included in our liturgical services. I think for the past half an hour, we have been discussing about the origin and development of Peshitta. Now we have to move on to the, the new translations. But before that, I have two quotes from two eminent uh, Syriac scholars who are honored around the world. And first is our own, uh, uh, the, the main uh, stalwart of Syriac uh, liter language and literature, Sebastian Brock. Once he has made in his book, uh, the Bible in the Syriac tradition, he has made a statement when understanding the Greek and Latin translate, the ancient translators were oriented towards the original text, while the modern translators is oriented towards the reader. Or earlier translators are more text-oriented or word for word, rather than the modern reader-oriented or a sense for sense. 
In this process, he claims that the Syriac Bible holds more original translation. So what? How? What is? What's the beauty of that? That that quote? Yes. So so when you translate from one language to another, uh, you have two extremes, and you have to choose a method in, in uh, that is somewhere in between, or you could go to one of these extremes. One extreme is that. I am translating, let's say, from Malayalam into English. I care about the Malayalam text. I want to represent the Malayalam text exactly. That means text-oriented. My orientation is the Malayalam text. Another methodology is to say, I want to pay attention to the reader. If I translate and I focus on the Malayalam as Malayalam, I'm going to lose my reader who is an English speaker. I need to translate the Malayalam in a free manner into an English uh, uh, structure or method uh, in an English way that my English reader will comprehend. Uh, so this is what Sebastian Brock is, is talking about. Uh, if you look at the very early translation of the Pshita, uh, it is reader-oriented. And later on, with Philoxenos and with the Harklian, it becomes text-oriented, away from the reader. And this is why it, it became complicated. And this is why people in the ninth century, they began to call the older one Pshita. It's simpler, it's easier. Let's use it. Okay. Um, and and this is why, for example, in our English translation of the Pshita, we decided that we want to be faithful to the Pshita, but at the same time, we have to think of the reader. The English that we produce must be idiomatic English. It cannot be an English phraseology that represents Syriac grammar because the English reader doesn't know Syriac grammar. So if I represent the Syriac grammar in my English, my English is going to be horrible. So my English has to be English. Uh, and that's what, what, what uh, we aimed at. And, uh, and that's what the modern methodology of, of translation is. Thank you so much. And uh, I just quote one more uh, scholar from Australia, Syriac scholar. You might be knowing, knowing him, Terry Feller. So once he commented in a class, he said, the Syriac Bible or Peshitta is a genuine, common human expression with a poetic approach. So he, he always tells in the class to his students, it is very much poetic and also it is very genuine approach to human expressions. So that attracts me to, towards the reading of, uh, of, uh, of Peshitta uh, translation. So would you just comment more for the sake of the readers, I mean, listeners, who can be more attracted to this version uh, in, in their future readings. Yeah, so so Syriac is, is uh, a poetic language in the sense that uh, poetry plays a, a major role uh, in, in composition. And that is also, uh, that also affects Syriac uh, theology. Uh, the, 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 the biggest theologians, more Ephraim, wrote theology in poetry, more Jacob of Suru, uh, Narsai in the Church of the East. They wrote uh, theology in, in poetic, poetic manner. Uh, some other traditions or some other uh, methodologies of writing, either of doing translations of, or of, of writing uh, uh, theological discourses is more philosophical and more rigid. And uh, what Terry Fala is trying to tell us is that the poetic nature and the poetic uh, uh, methodology that the Syriac fathers used uh, are closer to the common person, are closer to, to the average person who is going to be listening and and reading these texts. They're not aimed at the philosophers only. They're not aimed at the Malfoni only. They're not aimed at the learned class only, but they are, uh, they are aimed 
at at the 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 everyday person and that's why it is an expression of of humanity it's because because it's it's for everybody that's what is meant uh, by fala i believe thank you so much and i think that that's what he explains in his class and that makes a uh, good sense when we read the the uh, the, the pishita translations now with this we will just move on to the uh, to the new project that have come up from your your you know your brain child for i think you know when when you read the introduction you'll see that it's a 10 years of uh, of hard work and also years of meditation and prayer that you put into it and therefore as a basic question i i just i've seen i couldn't get it uh, at my, my hand but then we are ordering for a copy but then i've seen through the internet the the photograph of it and the, on the face page what you have written is the traditional syriac peshitta text and the second part is what i want to know the antioch bible english translation what what is what, why do you provide that kind of a, a text heading to the to the bible yes so so basically in our edition we have on one side we have the syriac and on the other side we have the english so the traditional syriac peshitta text refers to the to the to the to the syriac to the syriac side and by the traditional syriac text we denote uh, two things we denote that a it is a text that has traditionally been accepted as more or more or less the standard the standard text by both the church authorities and by scholarship as well that means we are not claiming that we are coming up with any new text when it comes to the syriac we are reproducing the syriac text that is accepted traditionally by both the churches and by the scholarly community and the second part the antioch bible english translation as you said for the past 10 years we have embarked uh, and we've been working on this project to translate the pshitto into English. We are not taking the King James and making it closer to the English. We are from scratch translating through a team, international team of scholars, obviously, not myself, international team of scholars, translating the Syriac text itself into English. We're not even, although we consult, obviously, the the, with the Old Testament, the Hebrew, with the, New, with the New Testament, the original Greek. But we're not interested in giving you the Greek behind the Syriac or the Hebrew behind the Syriac. You can go and, and, and buy, buy these books elsewhere. What we want to give you is what is the Syriac, but in an English form if you cannot read Syriac. And we called, we called our project about 10 years ago the Antioch Bible. Uh, that, is, that was the name of the project, the Antioch Bible, uh, because it is, it is used in the, mostly in the churches of the Antiochian uh, tradition. I don't mean Antiochian theologically, but I mean the Church of Antioch, be it the Syriac Orthodox Church, the Syriac Catholic Church, the Maronite Church, uh, the offshoot church, uh, churches of, of these churches that I mentioned uh, in India. Although it is also the, the Church of the East and the Chaldean Church, obviously, uh, who, who use this text. And uh, Antioch, as you know, is the place where, according to Acts, uh, in the Middle East, uh, Christianity, uh, the name Christians, came, came into, into being. And we wanted to use um, Antioch uh, to, to emphasize uh, the importance of Eastern Christianity, as we, we, as I said in the Book of Acts, the name Christians came into being in Antioch, and always, especially here in the West, we are always uh, uh, talking about uh, as if Christianity was born in the, in the in the West. They know Jerusalem, and from Jerusalem we jump to 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 right. other places in in Europe. And I always say, you know, when you go north from Jerusalem to Antioch, you know, you can turn right. You don't always have to, to turn left. And yes. we, we wanted to emphasize this turning to the right because this is where, this is the, 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 the cradle 
of Christianity is is the Middle East, and that's why we call we called it the Antioch Bible. I think ex excellent explanation, and also it it uh, remarks a great or it speaks a lot, even from the from the title that you have given. I believe that that makes a great sense for each reader. But at the same time, I think you need to rule out one more doubt uh, from my side that we, if you go to the mar market, you will find l different kinds of uh, Bible. And one of the Bibles that we talk about is Orthodox Study Bible. So because there is, again, another title, Orthodox Study Bible, and we have this Peshitha Bible and English translation, I mean, the New Testament in English translation, I think uh, our readers would like to know how we are going to have this differences and what are we offering uh, uh, something better or delicious than uh, something which is already there with us. Yes, uh, the the Orthodox Bible that uh, that you are referring to, which I understand, of course, many of our churches are using, especially uh, Malankara churches. Uh, that Bible is basically the King James Bible, uh, edited a little bit with this Greek Septuagint in mind. And it has a number of footnotes uh, that denote some of the Orthodox, the Byzantine Orthodox uh, theological reflections uh, on the Bible. Uh, they're not very deep reflections they're, they're, but I mean they're good of course uh, but uh, they are a bit uh, superficial let's say and even from that perspective there is another project that I am involved in with a number of Orthodox colleagues from the Byzantine tradition in order to uh, to produce an Orthodox study Bible a pan-orthodox study Bible that works for both the Chalcedonian and the non-Chalcedonian, that means the Byzantine and the Oriental Orthodox traditions, with emphasis on orthodoxy, not using the King James and massaging it, but rather using texts uh, for, for that particular project, we will be used texts that are drawn from the Septuagint, from the Greek Septuagint. Of course, this will work for all of the Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, and the Byzantine Orthodox. But we, the Syriac family, uh, are a bit of an exception because we have our own Pshita tradition that differs from the Septuagint. So, uh, and as, as I said, uh, that is not only Oriental Orthodox for the Syriac Orthodox, but also for the Catholics and the Church of the East and the Chaldeans. So we are kind of a bit of... Uh, a uh, special case because we have our own tradition, uh, our own Pshita tradition that in my my view, uh, the, uh, we, we, we prefer to use it. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, one day we began to talk about it, but we did not launch it yet very formally. Uh, but you will be hearing about this pan-Orthodox study Bible, uh, which we hope uh, that will become uh, useful outside uh, of the uh, Syriac Pshitta tradition that will be used for the Copts and the Ethiopians and the Greeks and the Russians and, and both Byzantine and non-Byzantine Orthodox churches. Thank you. Uh, so my, my question was not uh, to see uh, that the, the effort of the Orthodox study Bible or maybe giving a new perspective for our, our tradition, but rather giving uh, giving an understanding, uh, a broader understanding about both the Bible so that when, when a reader takes up both, they will understand what is what. And that, that's the reason why I've just posed this question. I think along with this, uh, it would be good if Malfuna could also give us uh, some light from the perspective of Malankara. You know, you, you knew that in Malankara, we were not having a, a Suryak Bible as such, uh, or translation. Uh, that, that is a time that God was blessed with uh, our late Kodafiskopo, uh, uh, Kanyambaram Bilkurian Kodafiskopo, has come up with a Malayalam translation, and which in his introduction he has written that it is taken from uh, the late lament that is sold in his patriarch, Michael Rabo's handwritten copy, and that is what in the introduction. And how, 
Um, can I say that the the new project uh, uh, that you have come out with is a uh, is a great reference for us while looking at the Malayalam Bible and this, so that we would we would encourage we would get more light. You know, we will be much more enlightened uh, with this new project, so that every every uh, Surya Christian in India or maybe our community can have one English copy and a Malayalam copy with them. What, what what do you suggest? Yes, I, I think that would be a very good uh, uh, methodology. And in in general, it is good for people who are interested in the Bible and its origin and the various versions to read more than one thing. So not only to read this or the Orthodox uh, Bible that we talked about, but also various versions so that each person can also compare for their own for their own. Uh, uh, understanding. Now, as far as coming to your question about the Malayalam, uh, of course, it's a great project. Uh, I remember I was in Kerala when it was launched uh, with uh, the late Karopiskopa, and I was seated next to him at Syria. Um, I remember when uh, when he presented it at, at the conference. Um, if one is going to look at a project to revise it, it's important to look at, uh, uh, at for example, uh, the Syriac, Pshitto, of course, to go back to it, our translation will definitely help. But I will always emphasize that people should always go back to the original. Uh, yeah. While our English translation is faithful to the Syriac, when you go from language to language to language, you start losing... Uh, the story gets lost sometimes. Yeah. So it's extremely important for people who want to revise uh, the 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 uh, Korean uh, Bible. While they can get they they can be assisted, of course, they can use our English translation as a resource. It's very important to have people on that committee who know both Syriac and Malayalam very well, in so that they can go back to the original uh, Syriac. In, in order to, to do the revision. Thank you so much. And uh, I think uh, now you, you have explained the, the greatness and also the importance, significance of, uh, of the Peshitta translation and its various uses and even the liturgical use. And if you uh, advise our young folk in the church and in general, what would be your advice uh, for them to, to, to the use of this new version? And what are these, what are these significant cardinal uh, significance, importance that they can they can explore from, from the Bible? So that I think here I, I look forward to see uh, how the youngsters in the Australian context is 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 going to associate with this Bible. Uh, because they want new English version. And also the, the most uh, important and fascinating thing is that they can see the Syriac as well in one tradition. And in that context, you, the the, the mastermind of the project, what, what will you advise to the young crowd uh, around the world, not only in Australia, around the world, even in the USA and in the English speaking world and to the Malayalam speaking world? This can be a, something very important something very specific that you will find. This, these are the pearls that you're going to get from, from the new translation. Yeah, so, so um, the, the, the one main thing that I always like to go back to is that it is important for every tradition uh, to, to, to use the text of, of its own heritage. That doesn't mean you should not be reading any other uh, texts, but it is important when you have a text that comes from your own heritage that your liturgy is based on, uh, it's very important when that text is available is uh, is, is to use that text. Um, uh, in terms of, of our youth, I believe that our project will give them a sense of identity. A sense of identity in the sense that this is the Bible of my heritage, this is the Bible of my church. Uh, also, with now, if you go to the market, the, there are tons and tons of English Bibles. Um, and one has to be a bit careful uh, because a lot of these Bibles uh, are produced uh, by various organizations that may have their own interpretation, 
their own dogma, uh, their own theological reflections. Uh, we tried our utmost best to translate the Pshito into English uh, free of dogma. Free of dogma means we are translating the text. We are not trying to make you a better Christian. We're not trying to make you a worse Christian. We are not trying to convert uh, somebody who's not Christian into Christianity. We're not trying to do anything. We are trying to present you with the texts. A translation that is trying to convert, even to convert from one form of Christianity to another form of Christianity, let's say trying to, con to convert people from, let's say, orthodoxy to evangelical type Christianity or, or, or whatnot, that effort goes into its text uh, and and uh, while it's very subtle and one may not pay much attention to it, uh, uh, using such text in our Sunday schools, uh, in, in our uh, uh, Bible studies, uh, will start altering the theology of the church without us feeling it. Uh, and we see that. Uh, I remember, I very much remember, uh, there was a game, um, uh, I forgot what, what they call it, when you bring the kids and, and you give a, a, a verse in the Bible and the kids have to, to, to cite it. It's from Matthew, from Mark, from this and from that. And of course, the, these games are downloaded from the internet and they are downloaded from English Bibles uh, that belong to some of, of, of these projects that I am talking about. Uh, and I remember in the audience, we had His Holiness, who was the bishop of the church. Uh, and of course, in, in his head, he has the Pshito. In his head, he has the Eastern texts. Uh, he, he, he does not know by heart uh, some of the modern evangelical translations. That's, that's not the basis of his education. And uh, sometimes I remember when, when uh, uh, the answer will be given and, and the, 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 uh, uh, the judges would, would, would say a verdict, this one is correct and this one is wrong. Uh, His Holiness, at the time he was the bishop, he would disagree. He, he was there as, uh, as, you know, to, 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 as, as, as uh, the head of the whole event. Uh, and the question is, why would he disagree? And the reason he would disagree because because he is embodied with a Pshito text. He is right. embodied with our traditional text, which has subtle differences from these new translations that try to push a certain dogma here and there. Mm. And that is the importance. It is not because the Pshita is better than anybody else. Everybody's tradition is good. Everybody's tradition uh, is worth something, uh, but you don't you you don't see uh, uh, a certain tradition going and uh, using the the scriptures and the liturgy of, of another tradition uh, because then tradition is gone. The, the, the reason we are a traditional church is because we have a heritage. Let the heritage on the side. Uh, the, the, then there is no need for Syriac Orthodoxy. There are so many forms of Christianity. We're not the only form of Christianity. We're not better than anybody else. We're no, we, we, and nobody else is better than us. Uh, but uh, it, it, it is a matter of, of keeping a liturgical heritage and a biblical heritage that is now a minority. Also, we have to remember that we are fighting for survival. We are now in the diaspora. And in the diaspora, we know that we do not last for more than a few generations. And that is a fact. We know it. The Suryoye have been in America since the 1890s, if not the, 18, the 1890s, if not the 1880s. Where are the descenders of these people? Okay. All our parishes still consist of immigrants. Yep. That means we do not survive. And mm -hmm. because of the uh, mishaps of political mishaps of the Middle East, there's hardly anybody left. 
Yes. That means we are a church in decline. We are in a church that is uh, uh, that that is fighting for survival. Yes. And this this project is not the only project, but this is one of the things that is going to help in order to to elongate our our life on this world. Yep. I think I think you you speak truth, and uh, it, it is something very fascinating, and the passion that you have shared with us with regard to the, the identity of Syria community worldwide, and also particularly in the Western, uh, Western landscape. I think uh, the, the work, the wonderful work that you are doing in order for making this presence known to the audience across the world is commendable. And I think uh, as we are coming to the close to the to this uh, this episode, I wish to ask you again: How are you planning to 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 uh, disseminate this uh, the, the, this version to the entire world? Uh, I think uh, now itself, I believe in our uh, pre-talk, you have said almost forty percent of the printed version has already gone from your office. But uh, do you think that you have a a project by which it can go uh, across the world. Even we in Australia, we are looking forward to have more copies of uh, of the version. How how do you think that this can reach to to the needy? Yes, yeah. uh, my my hope is that is that the churches that use the Pshita tradition, uh, as I said, not only the Syriac Orthodox but the various churches. Uh, be it the uh, Assyrian Church of the East, Chaldean, Syria Catholic, Maronite, uh, I hope that they will begin to use to use uh, this or even a revision of it in the future if if uh, if uh, a revision is needed uh, to, to to use this uh, with their with their faithful. Uh, I don't have a grand plan as to how to achieve this. This is mostly going to rely on grassroots uh, people using it, but also at the same time, it helps if there is support from the hierarchy of these various churches, yeah. recognizing that this is the pshita of our tradition uh, and, and that instead of you know using a King James, let's say, uh, or, or an IV or, or whatnot, uh, is, is, is to use, uh, to use our, our own texts. And the more people who read it and use it. Uh, usually, usually these, these versions uh, go through a number of revisions, uh, but these revisions are only possible when people are using them. Uh, scholars can sit and read and revise and revise to, to a certain degree, but yeah. only through usage. For example, I am, on the, I am on the committee of the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, and mm -hmm. now we are making the updated edition in, in 2020. Uh, 2021 as well, we will be launching the in, a new revision that is done by scholars. Mm -hmm. But first it was called the standard version, and then it became the revised standard version. And mm -hmm. then in the 70s, it became the new revised standard version. 30 years later now, we have the updated edition of the new revised standard version. These things take decades, but in order for this to progress, it is important a for grassroots for for people to to start saying I want to start using it, but also it's important for the hierarchy of all these churches to say you know we need to start using using this using the pshita because it is the the Bible of the tradition. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your thought on this. I I too believe that if the church hierarchy is taking a a, a forward step to see that these uh, our, our tradition Bishita tradition is used in all the churches so that so that they will at least know what is what is the real uh, real translation uh, one of the one of the sentences that you made was so much impressed me that you're not going to side one tradition or one church or in your translation you are just presenting what it is from uh, from very ancient uh, translation or maybe a text and therefore, I believe this is going to be one of the very significant uh, move in terms of knowing the Bible in its origin, original form, 
and uh, I when I when I read some of your articles, you have mentioned many places that some words, some sentences, some chapters, and and everything. Sometimes you you don't see it there. Sometimes the words have changed. The original meanings have changed in the new new translations. But you have picked up those words and given the proper uh, imprint in in the new uh, version. And therefore, uh, we are the team of Oroho are also very happy to to bring out this uh, edition of your talk to the world, so that the world will come to know that this is something very important for us to to know in a world. Uh, where different uh, Bibles, uh, Bible translations give us or take us into a different perspectives, where it is something very important for us to read the right one. Thank you so much, Malfonat. I think it is it's a time for signing off. And what what is the uh, what is your final uh, for the for the second round of topic? And I'm I'm sure that we will come back again with a new topic and your expertise in the area of Bible and and even Syriac literature, other areas. I know. A lot of scholarly articles have been have come out from Gorgias Press and books, and a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, the academic stuff. and And I think we need to to have more conversation to to give this to the world. And uh, before we signing off, what what is something that you can talk about your Bible and to the to our audience in order for us to have more uh, more robust way of understanding uh, the 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 Peshitta Bible. Yes. Uh, well. Um, I, I, um, uh, it, it is, I, I don't know exactly what, what to say, except that, um, except that the, the, uh, motivation, uh, that, uh, that kind of drove me, uh, to do this is to provide, uh, something, uh, for, for, for the faithful of the church, uh, I hope it is it is a modest thing that uh, that they can benefit from, uh, and I hope it will not be a disappointment. That I hope that it is something that uh, they will uh, uh, not only use, but maybe maybe people after us can even build upon. Because nobody is perfect, you know. We are not we are not perfect. We cannot claim uh, that. Uh, we uh, that, that the stuff that we produce uh, is 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 the most perfect thing, and uh, uh, I hope that it will be motivation to to others to work, uh, each according to her or to his capacity, uh, in in whatever manner that they can, in in order, as I said, to prolong the life of this. Syriac tradition that that is now in danger. Thank you so much, and I think uh, uh, you will never disappoint us uh, here in Australia when we deal with uh, academic uh, stuff. Uh, we we have you know the uh, the publishers. Uh, uh, maybe we look at the publishers whenever we discuss about Orthodox theology, Orthodox world, even something connected with the Orthodox world and the other traditions. Uh, uh, we, we come to know that oh, Gorgias Press is the one which is coming at the top uh, in today's world. And therefore, your ministry is something very important, not only to the Syriac Orthodox Church or Syriac traditional churches, but to the entire world. You, you don't look at, I mean, it is very true confession from my side as an academician and as a researcher, you incorporate traditions and various various voices together, put together. I know your publications have come out with even Indian voices, and that means it has it has got a wide range of uh, perspectives that you are going to uh, you are trying to assimilate together. And we are looking forward to have more uh, expressions like this for the benefit of the humanity, and in particular the the identity of the Syriac Orthodox Church and Syriac Orthodox humanity. And may God continue to bless you in all your endeavors. And we, the Oro team, are always uh, honored to have you always with us. And uh, please take care of uh, your Bible project again and again and with other traditions as well. I'm sure that the good Lord will uh, give the right uh, time for continuing the the best possible manner in the future project as well. And uh, as we are thankful to you, Malfono, you are Malfono, and Shemshoyo, 
and also the the uh, the doctor for the academic world thank you so much and thank, thank you thank you all the urho audience we are thankful to all the audience today and we will come out with another episode and also we are looking forward to have more conversation with uh, uh, malfono shamshana dr george kras thank you thank you one and all